Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Velen, and this is Ender IO. How to make zombies work for you. Basically, today we're going to be taking a look at zombie generators, as well as how you can use the nutrient distillation liquid that fuels them to your advantage to make a fully automated setup, plus how you can actually understand what all this stuff does. And a quick thank you to our patron, Diablo Potato. Your support has been much appreciated. Thank you, Diablo Potato. So, if you are to look here, I have a whole lot of stuff set before me, as well as a lot of things going on behind me. I will give you a quick summary of what exactly is happening here, the things that you can actually benefit from, and then we'll go over it bit by bit off on the side here. So, to start with, we kind of have zombies being spawned in via a spawner here, uh, an automatic spawner via Ender.io, and then they are being killed by a Killer Joe, which is then having the drops picked up by a vacuum chest. And it is also, uh, well, having the XP gained or gathered by uh, a little XP vacuum over there, which is being stored in an experience obelisk, thus storing our XP levels. Now, it is being fed by multiple things. As you can see, it has a wooden sword. It also is being fed by nutrient distillation liquid which uh, is currently being made in a vat from some of the drops that these guys are giving us, as well as some of this nether wart that is being farmed in this farming station. Now, a lot of the tools, the, the uh, wooden sword, the uh, wooden hoe, and the wooden axe that is in here are all being automatically crafted in the crafters here, which are also being harvested from this little tiny tree farm that I have set off on the side. It is fully automated and being run by two Franken zombie generators with uh, double layer capacitors in each. Plus, there's a little bit of a power benefit in this. Now, it's a little bit complex to look at. I, I also do have this here in a tractor obelisk, which is pulling the mobs in this direction towards the obelisk. But it's not too bad, and there are moments that some of the power will go down as some things happen, but otherwise it will shoot right back up, and you'll be definitely getting a uh, net gain. And it is very expandable, and you can get a lot of power out of it. So, how does all this work? Let's start off with something simple. The actual Franken-Zombie and the zombie generator. Now, what are the difference between the two? These The differences are mainly just the recipe and the power output. So right here is a zombie generator. It's crafted with some electrical steel ingots and, of course, some fused quartz, which is a little bit expensive because each one costs you four quartz to make. Now, these are very key, and you're going to want to get as much quartz as you can at this point. It's going to be very key for expansion in your power setup, as well as all the benefits you can get from having like a, a mob farm, a tree farm, a, all sorts of farming farms, XP farms. It, it's all good. Uh, so you're going to want to definitely dive into that. Now, you will need a zombie electrode, which is made in a slice and splice. We'll cover that shortly, but first, let's continue on with these guys, the zombie generators. Now, there is a second version here, a Franken zombie. There's also a third, but I'm not going to get into that. It's more end game. But a Franken zombie generator is a similar item. It works in the same way, takes the same liquids, but it gives a better output. It does use fused quartz, but instead it uses solarium ingots, which are basically in an alloy smelter, soul sand and gold ingots combined together. Now, a Franken zombie generator will require a Franken zombie, which is a little bit different. You need a Z Logic controller in a soul binder. I will be covering this as well plus some kind of soul vial to basically make it very glowy so that it will work. Uh, so, like I said, we'll be covering both of those once we get through these a little bit. Now, I want to show you how these work. Basically, if you look, right-clicking on them, it shows you a little bit on the inside. It will require some kind of capacitor. I have them at the three levels, basic, double, and the oct. And same thing with the, uh, the Franken-Zombies as well. And each one is being input into a vi vibrant capacitor bank, giving you different amounts for the same quantity of fluid being inserted. Now, these guys don't require energy. They only generate it from nutrient solution, which is injected into this via some kind of item up there called a vat, which I will cover in a moment. But to continue on with this, if you put nutrient uh, solution in here and the appropriate capacitor, it will basically use up about a quarter, uh, maybe a little bit more than that, of the solution and stop. 
it will need constantly being topped up or just to be pulling from an infinite source, whatever you have at hand. But in this case, with a basic capacitor, just this little bit that it, the, of solution that is used, which is, in, I believe it's a 601 millibuckets of nutrient distillation is used in this case, will yield you a little over half a million uh, energy units. If I use the same thing with a, a double layer capacitor, gets me almost uh, three quarters of a million. And if I use an octadic version, or octadic, however you'd like to pronounce it, you'll get about 865,000. Now, if you go up to the Franken zombie generators, which this is where I really want to focus, the zombie generator using electrical steel and a zombie electrode, which requires these ingredients here. Ignore the top two. These six here, energetic alloy, zombie heads, a basic capacitor, and silicon, versus a Franken zombie, which requires this here, which the soul binder is just one extra item to make, but the Z-Logic controller that you need for that is solarium, silicon, a zombie head, and redstone. It's actually not that bad to make, and I highly recommend that you just skip the zombie generators, go straight for the Franken zombie generators if you can, because they are going to give out a lot more. So to start off with here, also, this will give out a maximum output of 80 units per tick, 100 units per tick, and 120 units per tick. Now, starting at the lowest level with a basic capacitor of the Franken-Zombies, it starts at 120, then goes to 150 with a double layer, and then up to 180 with an octatic. So, you can see that these are a lot better for power generation, and they will use up the same amount of uh, stuff. As you can see here, uh, looking at the top right, it's 865,000. It, its highest level of the zombie generator is going to give you the lowest level equivalent of this one. So it just goes up from there over a million, and then you've got uh, about a million and a third for the octatic. So it's, it's really beneficial to go for these ones, and I recommend that you do so because you'll also use less materials in the end. But it will require an extra step. So these here is where it comes in. We're going to be using these to basically power this entire setup. And like I said, it's infinitely uh, expandable. You can just add on a few extra pieces and so on, and you can get yourself a lot more power out of it. So a soul binder. This is a very interesting device. It actually has a, a very good animation. Uh, if you look at the, I forgot to mention, these guys do have a little bit of an animation. Uh, if you look here, they have kind of like little bubbles popping up on their in the, the tank when they are full and in use, which is actually very immersive. I, I like that a lot. And the soul binder is required with some solarium and a bunch of different skulls. Now, these are going to be a little difficult to get unless you have, of course, the ender, which if you remember, you look at here, increased skull and ender pearl drops. That is the important part. You're going to want to start killing things with this sword as often as possible. This is why it's one of the first tools you're going to want to create in Ender IO. So, once again, Soul Binder, made with the Soul Machine chassis, Solarium, a bunch of skulls. Soul Machine chassis is a little different, but it should be similar to what you've already been making with some of the others, like the Alloy Smelter. A simple machine chassis. It's just ha it just has some soul attuned dye blend applied to that, which is made from quartz powder, organic black dye, and organic brown dye. Which of course, you know, you've got a lot of like little rabbit holes to get down. But at this point, you should have access to most of those things if you want to try and up upgrade or just make things more interesting for your base. Having your base being run by zombie power, for instance, <laughs> it's one of the most fun things I could think of. Now there's a slice and splice as well which is a very useful tool in trying to get a little bit higher level item. If you look here, it is made in a couple different ways, mostly just different skull variations, but you can use dark iron or regular iron bars. Another soul machine chassis, solarium ingots, and in this case, energized bimetal gears, which requires energetic alloy nuggets. Uh, but, once again, shouldn't be too hard to get to at this point. Now, I do have a lever here. Everything's hooked up with redstone, and I've got it hooked up with octatic, double layer and basic for the, each one of these ones. So you can see the speed difference because these do take some time. Now I accidentally flicked the lever before I started the video. So these ones have already started. You can see that nine, four and 2%, that it's just, <laughs> that, that was it already going. But these do take some time and they do have their own little animations for it. I have them hooked up with just some creative capacitor banks at the, bo at the back. And these soul binders, they require a soul vial, 
and some kind of broken spawner. Any broken spawner will do, and you can turn it into a broken spawner of your choosing. Now, if you already have a broken spawner that is turned into something, then that works. In this case, I'm actually kind of doing something that you don't need to do. I'm putting a zombie soul vial on a zombie spawner. <laughs> Basically, we're going to be looking at zombie spawners in this one. You can actually make it spawn anything you want uh, within reason, and it will just take a little bit longer and so on. But in this case, you put the soul vial, which to make one of those, it just takes a bit of fused quartz and a solarium ingot on top, gets you one of these. And it's a very handy tool. It can save you in a pinch, and it can also help you to create more enemies. Basically, you take a soul vial, and you just right-click it on an entity, and it will store that entity in, a, in that vial. Uh, so when this spawns out another zombie, I am in creative, so it will only, uh, it won't actually use up the bottle, but it does use it up in the process. You can always release the entity, and then the bottle will be renewed. But basically, once this is done, here they come now. I can just click on this guy, and you can see I got a soul vial with a zombie in it, in each one. And if you click on the baby variant, it's going to be the same thing. Uh, baby zombies are basically considered a regular zombie, for that matter. Now... You put one of those in here of what you would like to have spawning, plus some kind of broken spawner. If you find any uh, spawners in the world, you break them with a pick. Ender.io will now turn them into a broken spawner that you can pick up and reuse later. You will need to donate eight of your own XP levels. If you want, you can use your player XP, or you can pump into it from an experience obelisk, which, of course, you can always set next to it if it has XP in it, and you can then configure it to start pulling or pushing on sides as you would normally. An experience obelisk is a device that will basically store all your levels or retrieve them at will. It is very handy, very lovely, and it will help you in case you have issues with dying with storing your XP. So in this case, I'm just going to use the XP that I have on me. I'm in creative, so it doesn't take any away. There we go. And I'm going to do that with each of these ones. It, the requirements are now met. And so when I flick this on, all of these are going to activate. Now, this one here has this recipe already in it. When these, when this starts processing, these get used up. So I pop these back in just so you could see what the recipe was that we're using. Does require shears and an axe of some sort. This just requires these two items here. If I click the lever, you can see everything starts working. These start sliding and making a, a like a grinding noise, and this starts making a squishing noise. <laughs> now, of course, this one's already finished. It, it finished two of them because it had the octatic in it. So we had the uh, the double layer and this one of course has the basic now in the case of a slice and splice i think you could probably get away with the basic capacitor it'll use up a little more power but it should be just fine it doesn't take very long this on the other hand takes a long time you can see with the octatic uh, capacitor we're just getting over 50 percent right now it takes a long time to rewrite and remake a new uh spawner basically and if you look over here we're only at 18 percent on a basic capacitor, so I recommend <laughs> if you don't have an ectotic or if you can borrow one temporarily, pop it in there. Otherwise, at least use a double layer because uh, you're going to be here all day waiting for a basic to get through. So this one's about finished. And when it's done, you get the soul vial back and a broken spawner that is now a zombie spawner, regardless of what spawner it was before. So how do you use this? If you hold shift, you see here it says hold shift, combined with a powered spawner in an anvil to set spawn type. Now, as a powered spawner, I have one here. Uh, let's grab this one that is set to a blaze. If you make one of these, it requires a bunch of electrical steel, a Z-Logic controller, which, if you remember, we just made some of those over here with that recipe in the Slice and Splice, and a bunch of vibrant crystals. These are very key. You're going to need a bunch of emeralds. I recommend doing some village trading. It's probably the cheapest way if you're not in extreme hills or have other ways of getting it. And like so, you get vibrant crystals. So, a powered spawner, once made with some kind of skull or head up here, should be very beneficial. You will need to take it, put it into an anvil with the spawner, and it will then transfer it from a neutral, in this case it's blaze, but it can be any that it already had before, can be changed out to something else. A zombie in this case. And it will cost you several levels. This is why it's also key to make sure that you've been storing your XP in an experience obelisk. Very handy indeed. Now, all this XP investment is going to pay off in the end. There we go. I now have a powered spawner that is for zombies. You just need to run power into it, 
and it will start creating zombies. In this case, uh, I actually think it, it has some power there. Active with single si signal. There we go. Uh oh, okay. Yeah, that that's just going to start spawning zombies everywhere. That's that's no good. But <laughs> let's turn that off. Never active. Uh, I, I uh, did a creative mode version where it had power already in it. My apologies. But you can see how it basically will work here. As the zombies die off due to the sunshine, uh, I have it currently set in here, underground in an area. If I right click and choose show range, it can then show you the range that it is actually going to place zombies in. Now, this being up here in the sun, it's probably not going to place up here because it's only a single block placement. But if you have the entire area filled in except for a few blocks, then it will only place in that small area. So you can actually make a smaller uh, spawn zone, though I do recommend that if it's uh, going to spawn things that are sensitive to the sun, that you at least make sure to give them some cover like I have here. Now that just covers a bit of basically spawning some mobs. At this point you just plug some power into it, it will tell you the progress on it and how long it takes, uh, depends on it. I, re I recommend you just go with a basic, because if you put anything else in there, it's gonna just chunk through the power really fast. Uh, for instance, 1600 per tick, that's that's a lot. If I put a basic capacitor in there, it's only going to use 160. So, yeah, it, it will go a lot faster with an octatic, but it also uses a lot more power. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let's get into the zombie power part. Of course, we're going to want to make nutrient distillation liquid. Now that we're able to spawn zombies into the world, it'll make things a lot easier. If you have a vanilla... Uh, mob spawner, you could use that, but it's it's not always going to be reliable because, you know, you're not always going to be nearby or at the right distance or whatever for it to start doing so. And you, you can't necessarily move it around too easy. You might not have something like a, a diamond chest transporter available to you in sud mod pack. But in this case, this will allow you to do it whenever you want. You can turn it on and off. It's great. You will then need a Killer Joe to probably start killing things. Now, you can use other mods to do this for you. Uh, for instance, I think Extra Utilities adds spikes uh, that you can use. You can uh, use the Attracting Obelisk here uh, to just draw them into the spikes or just spawn them on top of them uh, or other similar type traps. But in this case, I'm just showing you the Ender IO option, which is a Killer Joe. Now, making one of these guys is a little bit more expensive. You need that Franken Zombie plus a bunch of uh, dark steel ingots. And the Franken Zombie is going to be a Z Logic controller plus some kind of soul vial of something to make it a magic Franken Zombie so that it's giving it a consciousness in a way. And then you'll need to give it a weapon and nutrient distillation, which, of course, if you're killing zombies, you're getting rotten flesh, among other drops, which can be highly beneficial. So, if you take that rotten flesh and put it into a vat, you can then process it into nutrient distillation, which a vat is actually relatively cheap compared to some of the machines you've been making so far. Fluid tanks are going to be very useful. Electrical steel ingot, cauldron, furnace, and some dark steel. It's not too bad in comparison. You're also going to want some endervoir, which this is basically an empty block. And you can bucket uh, uh, water into it and create an infinite water source. Now, you only need a minimum of three. Uh, like in this case, I have three set up down there. And you'll see here that this vat is being fed water. And it's also being fed rotten flesh and nether wart from a farm I have going on down there. And it is distilling, making nutrient distillation but it also requires power to do so so this is kind of like you have to have some power and some things in place before you can actually get to this point and then of course i'm storing a bunch in uh, these fluid tanks as a backup and i have them being fed into franken zombie generators which then are outputting into my power system and going back down to all these machines which i'll get into more detail in a moment Let's cover the basic setup I have. I've got three of these endervoirs plus a vat, which, of course, you can always enhance this by, uh, you know, getting more vats or changing the recipe up. If you want to check out, check it out, you can make nu nutrient distillation with several methods. I'm only showing you one. In this case, it's just some kind of rotten flesh uh, as well as uh, nether wart, and it makes you a little bit of nutrient distillation, but it also requires water. So if you are growing this, and you're harvesting those, and this is automatically making you water, then you should be good. So we need to have water coming into this for it to actually start working. I've got a power source because I just basically have 
something uh, I forgot. I, I powered this up beforehand. So you will have to have some power before you can actually get this going. Yes, it, it does need to be jump started. But if I go over here and I input, the water will now start coming in. And once it gets to a high enough level, it will start processing. There we go. And then it's going to prog progress and make nutrient distillation, which if I then also output onto the side where this generator is, there we go, it will then slowly start filling up this zombie generator with nutrient distillation. I've got a double air capacitor in here, which is going to be more than enough, but it will take a little bit of time for it to actually start working. There we go, and you can see that the zombie generator is starting to get some juice in there. It's not actually going to start working until it gets at least, uh, what was it, 1400 millibuckets in it. And it's very close. I think the next uh, injection should do it. And then it will output power. And in this case, 100 uh, energy per tick is what is generated in this case because I have a double layer capacitor in there. And this is just a zombie generator. It's not the, uh, the, the Franken zombie version, which I do recommend. But there's more to this. Once you get this going, that's great. But how do you maintain things like the, uh, the Killer Joe requires a weapon? And the weapons usually will break. Yes, you could probably put something like the Ender in there with some power on it, but eventually it's going to get through that durability. So there are other options to it. In this case, we've got auto crafting going on. And yes, there are plenty of ways you can do this, but I chose to show you auto crafting because it's the most traditional, probably the simplest way of going about it. Now, in this case, I've got wooden swords coming in. It can use axes as well, so you don't have to spend the extra crafting materials to make another crafter for uh, making swords. But I also have hoes and axes being made for this setup in the farm. This farming station, which is made with a Z-Logic controller, Vibrant Crystals, and a Pulsating Crystal, which is very similar to a Vibrant one. It just has a diamond in the center of the uh, Vibrant alloy instead. Uh, plus more of the Solarium and Soul Machine chassis and another Energized thing. It, it's rather expensive to make, and it's also a little bit expensive to run, but it is very, very nice. Uh, let's take out some of this here. We'll get rid of these here. Get rid of all this output. Now you've got a four corners Right now, this is two of them. This stone with the dirt in the middle represents one. And this, uh, where the soul sand is, represents another. Now, those can change depending upon what you put in there right now. I'm only using a basic capacitor. I don't need it to do much more. It is being fed in auto-crafted wooden hoes and wooden axes to plant and start chopping down trees and the, uh, the nether wart. Now, it also has the output going over here. I have set it so that any excess saplings from these birch, because they're small and I don't need a ton of wood from it, but the excess saplings just get burnt in this sterling generator and then fed back into the power system, which I thought was just a really nice touch instead of voiding them or trashing them or anything like that. Now, the nether wart is going up and fed into our uh, vat so that it can start making more nutrient distillation. On the other hand, the wood is being used to craft all this stuff. It's being fed into this first crafter here. And to make things a little simpler, let's go over to just a crafting setup so you can understand how this works. Now I have an input. Over here is going to be uh, my wood supply, which I believe I've got uh, oak set up for this one in this case. Yep, I do. So I have a crafter, which these are very simple to make. They use an industrial machine chassis, some silicon, and so on. You can also make a simple crafter if you really want to, but I recommend you just do this so you don't have that power leak issue. And it's not very expensive as it is. It barely uses any power. In fact, I've got this simple photovoltaic cell, one of them, that only makes 10 per tick, running all three of these without any problem at all. So, if you open this up, you can just put basic capacitors in them. You could always upgrade those and make them go faster and use up more power, but in this case, it's all you really need for a bare minimum setup, and it should last you for quite some time as it is. You can basically tell it uh, a recipe to put in here. If I wanted to, I could do this and tell it I want uh, uh, this kind of recipe, which doesn't exist, of course. Uh, actually, it did exist, but if you look, I can make sticks. Uh, you know, I could uh, delete this just by clicking, and it just puts a ghost in there. What this is going to do is take the log and make more wood planks. And you can always change the outputs and stuff. And I have it outputting on the right side at the moment, and it's being fed power from that same side as well. 
it's always active. It just needs the wood for it to actually do something. So if I put this in here, it automatically crafts it into wood planks, which then goes one of two ways until it is completely filled up. So in this case, it did not go towards here, but it would take two wood planks and make a stick or make four sticks in this case. And in this case, it's going to take two sticks and two wood planks and make a hoe. In this case, it just started filling up that section. So it went in here and made the sticks. Then the sticks went in here. And I have it all set up with these little filters. Basically, you have it extracting on this side. Then this one that is making sticks is inserting and extracting. You could always use filters if you wanted to, to help tell it which to insert and which to extract. But in this case, it's rather smart. And then it all goes in here with only an insert into this, which is getting all of these items. Now, if I put in an entire stack, you'll start seeing it's crafting up a whole bunch of wood. And then that is being used to make a whole bunch of sticks. And once this starts filling up with all of the stick requirements, it will then start filling up with the wood requirements. But it will also keep a backlog of anything in some of the other crafters, depending on the priorities that you might set this for. You can always set your priorities, so that, that might help. But otherwise, if you have enough of these, for instance, if I grab another stack of wood and I put them in this input here, it will then pull them in and constantly keep making more. And then it's just going to constantly keep making those sticks. This starts filling up and it, it actually goes up and down because it's placing one in this spot, making wooden hose. As you can see here, it's just popping them out left and right. Now, in the case of this, you could get away with that setup and then adding one more crafter and just making axes and hoes. Therefore, you're feeding your farming station with those. And then you could have the excess axes going over to the Killer Joe over here, which if you're curious, I now have a wooden axe. I'll pop that in here. And the next set of zombies that come out, you'll see it can then start using that. But it, as before, it's going to be slower and it's only going to hit one zombie at a time. But that is an option that you could always go for. Now you'll notice that I don't have an entire area set up with the farming station. Now you could increase the capacitors to make this farming station go even bigger, but this is a, a nice minimal setup to get you everything you need. If you click here, it'll show you the range. And you can see here, this area here, you only need a couple of saplings. And in fact, I recommend you only use what you need. You don't need to have constant massive amounts being grown because then it's just going to end up causing you more lag with a ton more stuff that you're going to be making. So in this case, I just put down the bare minimum of what seems to be working, and it's great. Now this here, an attractor obelisk, is not required. Like I said, you could fill in the area that you're spawning mobs in and have your killer Joe, which its area is there, which to give you a better idea, I've got one over here so you can see its range. It kind of covers this entire area with whatever weapon you have attached to it or that it is using. And if you have your entire spawning area in that zone, you don't really need an attractor obelisk. You don't need that at all. But since I have a much larger zone, I figured I would bring this out and show you. You can actually make one of these, which it is made with an enticing crystal and a bunch of other regular uh, items we've already discussed. Enticing crystal is once again used in a soul binder. A soul vial of a villager plus an emerald will get you one of these, basically placing a villager here for them to constantly want to come and attack. <laughs> At least that's kind of the idea behind it. And it will require power. So that is something that you might want to consider. Do I even want to spend the resources and energy in making one of those? Or shall I just make my kill zone a little bit smaller so that my killer Joe can kill all the mobs? On top of that, you could always just put a little bit of water along the back and have them being pushed towards the killer Joe. <laughs> a little vanilla mechanic there. And as before, I don't think I mentioned the, uh, the recipe for the experience obelisk which then is also piping things out. Its recipe is going to be very similar, but it's got a fluid tank and an experience rod on here, which is actually really, really cheap. I do recommend that you get one of these as soon as possible. And if you notice in the center here, I have this, an XP vacuum. Underneath, I've got it piping out into this XP obelisk or experience obelisk. An XP vacuum is very unique in that a lot of people don't know how to actually get it started. But the recipe, it's just a bunch of iron around a pulsating crystal and an experience rod. 
You place it down, and it will, after you've activated it, vacuum in any XP orbs that are nearby. Now to get it started, you need to actually take a bucket of XP into an XP vacuum. How do you get a bucket of XP? Well, you can make XP uh, enchanting, uh, rather bottle O enchanting uh, items. But uh, I mean, making those, how do you, you trade for villager? Really? That's crazy. Alternately, you could just make yourself a fluid tank, which uh, I think I've, I've got one around here somewhere. Yeah, in fact, I've got one in my inventory. So you'd take a fluid tank after you've made an experience obelisk, and you could then put some, actually, I just used it right there. Um, <laughs> you can then put some levels in it. You can store uh, several levels into it. There we go. And then you just get your tank, and you can always right-click on it, or you could just put it next to it and then have it feed in, basically taking the I.O. of this and configure to pull. And you can see it then starts putting that in there. Now, what can I do with that? You get a bucket, an empty one at that. And then you put this either inside or you just bucket the, uh, you know, the, I, the XP out. In this case, I'm actually going to insert the bucket. It will then take it out. I now have a bucket of it. I don't need any more. I can actually put that back in. There we go, output. So now the uh, tank is emptying all of its contents back into the obelisk. I can right click this XP vacuum and it is good to go. So right click, it now is lit up and it has a maximum range of six, which isn't that big uh, in some cases, but it is in others. So if I were to have this up on this ledge, it wouldn't actually reach the back wall. So that's why I put it in the center so that it gathers all the XP. Now the player usually will gather XP a little bit faster than the uh, the XP vacuum. Rather, it will pull towards a player instead of the vacuum if you're nearby. But that's really nothing too much to worry about. You can always just put your stuff, there you go, in your XP obelisk and be done with it. And then you just have this piped out into it, and you have a way of storing it. And you can always use that. You can just have it hooked up to your uh, soul binders as well. So I know this one's been very talky, very tedious, and a lot of, well, crazy stuff going on in the background. But I hope you guys found it useful and that you uh, are able to understand at least the basic mechanics of getting some zombie power going, as well as all the benefits uh, that it can give you. Lots of experience levels, your own farming station, lots of mob drops, nutrient distillation fluid, which you can also, you know, convert into other things later on down the road, mob spawning abilities. It's great. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to spread the mischief to everyone you can think of. And until next time, folks, I'll see you. And don't forget, we're streaming on Twitch most days, 10 p.m. UK.